perhaps my most important observation so far, and the one that is simultaneously the most optimistic looking forward, is the fact that after I took a plunge into the world of generative AI, I did not lose even an inch of interest in doing photography, videography, or 3D art. Early on, I felt a clear distinction between AI and non-AI generated art in my mind. And the main factor allowing for this distinction is overabundance. The ease of access to these models and the rapid rollout allows for everyone and their mother to generate images, videos, and music. And they don't have to be geniuses to do that. It's always easy to copy a prompt from somebody else by first looking at the result you're aiming to achieve. So as the world gradually becomes oversaturated with synthetic images, videos, and music, strictly human-made art should in theory gain more value, simply due to its relative scarcity. At least I hope it will. And there is also some anecdotal evidence to support this theory. For example, I notice that people are a lot quicker to dismiss an image when they find out it's AI generated, despite that image looking impressive. And I find it with myself too. Important to note here, I'm only talking about strictly text to image or text to video prompt based workflows. Image to image or image to video workflows, which are using human made art as an input, are more interesting to me. An artist can also have a more direct role in creating with the help of AI tools. A good example of this is the frequently demonstrated workflow by the artist Martin Nebelong. He blends the traditional approach in creating of 3D and 2D art with generative AI by using the latter as a type of a magic brush. Martin maintains control over his creation as he paints and sculpts in the same way as he normally would, using his hands and eyes but the output is further enhanced in real time by AI tools. In Martin's case, he can also choose the strength of AI input at any time, allowing for maximum flexibility. I think his approach can save a lot of time, specifically at the stage of brainstorming and drafting of ideas. By the way, the importance of human factor that is shaping our perception was to our knowledge first described by the ancient Greek philosopher Protagoras, some 2500 years ago. He's attributed in saying, man is the measure of all things. That is, human attributed context really matters to us. Well, because we are human. For instance, when I see a street photo generated by AI, and say, a real street photo taken by Vivian Mayer, I will be drawn more to Mayer's work. Why? What exactly makes it so easy to choose? Well, first, the importance of a story or an origin myth that lies behind any creation. I've heard about Vivian Mayer before and the incredible story behind the discovery of her work Second, relation to the human condition. I could see myself in some aspects of her photography. For example, in her apparent fascination with taking self-portraits in reflections. Or even contemplating her motives, like why she never spoke a word about her work to anyone. And finally, a third, rather human criteria influencing my perception, fairness, the precedence of her work and the fact that Mayer's photos might have been used in training the AI models factors into my preference as well. And again, to bring it back to Protagoras, even if I didn't know anything about Vivian Mayer, the mere fact of her being a person would make her work so much more interesting to investigate. So in the end, we have the overabundance of AI content and our predisposition towards the human element within each creation that draws a clear distinction between AI-made art and human-made art in my mind. 
and in the minds of probably a majority of people living today.